Well, in this course, when they were putting it together, they looked at a, this guy, actually, who was from the University of Minnesota, I think, who put this together. And he looked at, he worked with college students. And he looked at putting emotions kind of on a, on a grid from powerful to powerless. And that's another way of saying how in control you feel. Is the emotion controlling me or do I control the emotion? And also looking at a grid from negative to positive. So if we looked at that list of emotions that we just put up there and looked at putting those emotions in a grid, let's look at where we would put those. So fear, I think, was the first one that came up. Where do you think fear would be? Is that a positive or a negative emotion? Negative. negative. And when you're feeling fearful, do you fe are you feeling in control of things or are you feeling like things are controlling you? So fear probably goes down here. Sadness, probably one of those things that goes down here. Being overwhelmed. Guilt. Nobody mentioned anger. Does anybody, anybody get angry? Yeah, I feel angry because it, it's going to change my life tremendously. It has. Great. I think the anger comes in lots of different ways. I think there's anger at, you know, why did my family member get this damn thing and what's it going to do to my life? And, you know, for all of you, it's going to affect your lives in very profound ways. Um, some of you have given up a lot of your lives to be able to take care of your person. The other anger for me comes from uh, the first reaction that I got from my siblings when I told them that we'd had a diagnosis. And as my dad said, she's been talking about it for years because she knew what was happening with her and as soon as I told my sister she said well she finally got her wish and it was like oh what, you know what an awful feeling and and so I had that anger at that response and <clears throat> what am I going to have to be dealing with sure from let's, all let's sides blame the victim on that one that's a good one yeah that's a good one yeah Pete yeah, I guess I'm, I must be the weird one in the group uh, I was angry at myself, or, or I was angry at my situation when my eyesight went. It took my car away, mm -hmm. it took my license away. I was angry at that. But when this happened to my wife, I wasn't angry. I, I just said, uh, you know, I would, I would say for me it's positive because now, now I had to help her. Mm -hmm. See, I, I've, I've had to do away with my anger. My problem is nothing because all that's going to happen to me is maybe I won't be able to see as well, but uh, I'm not going to run into any walls. But she's going to have the hard time. So I don't have the anger there for what's happening to her. I have the anger for what happened to me. But now I feel more positive in helping her than it was to me. So it's, uh, like yeah. I said, I And, you know, not everybody experiences all of these. It's, um, you know, I mean, the fact that you haven't had that, that's okay. The fact that Kim and some other folks have, that's okay, too. I think that's sort of, we've got a whole range of things here. I think anger sometimes goes up here because I think, you know, in like psychotherapy, when people go into counseling, when people are real depressed, if we can get them angry, we've usually made some progress because usually anger spurs you into doing something. So sometimes anger can go up here because if you get angry about something, oftentimes it mobilizes you to do something. Depression is sort of the opposite of that where you're like, oh, you know, I can't move. But anger oftentimes kind of spurs you. So it's a, it's a negative emotion, but it's maybe a more powerful thing. Can you think of what might be some emotions over here that were positive and powerful? Compassion was the one that, that struck me. Yeah, Pete. Four letter word, L-O-V-E. By the time I learned that my mom had Alzheimer's, I went through horrors uh, way before. Because, as I said, it was very difficult to understand. First of all, ignorance. You don't know what Alzheimer's is. You don't have any clue of what uh, dementia is and the symptoms. People who take care of, of other people, it has to come from the heart. That's all it is to it. If you think with your head, you get mad, you get frustrated, you blame to that person, um, all kinds of issues and things. But if it comes from your heart, it's a totally different picture. Acceptance is a word we're going to talk about. Um, and I have a feeling you guys, with your dad, 
might be coming to some acceptance of this, perhaps. Um, I think maybe three or four weeks ago you weren't there, and maybe you are now. Um, acceptance sort of implies this, I, I can sort of let go of unrealistic notions. I think lots of times when we get, when we're in these situations, um, you know, we want to find a cure, we want to fight, we want to do all these things, and in this kind of a situation, we don't have those things available to us. And so, letting go in a realistic way and accepting that it is what it is, I think is helpful. It, it, it lessens some of these stuff. So I think acceptance might go here. It's a positive emotion, but it's not a particularly powerful one. It's kind of a neutral one. I think another one that can go here is some satisfaction in a job well done, perhaps. Having a good encounter with your family member. Learning a technique to help them not get into a situation where they're overwhelmed and confused. What you experienced with your mom shopping the other day, you know, a, a light bulb went on. It's like, wow, okay, I, maybe I was overloading her, and if I don't do that, we can still go shopping together, but it'll be a good experience for her and a good experience for me. You mentioned something, Kim, about simplifying your communication with her and thought maybe it was better. Yeah, I think so. so there's a lot of things that you can do as a caregiver to make the situation better. And I think that's this satisfaction, like, wow, I learned how to do this, or I kind of can control what I do, which might have an impact on what my family member does. So this guy's theory about measuring these emotions, I mean, this is obviously where you would want to be. But most of us are here. This is where you spend 99% of your time as a caregiver is down here. So his theory says that you can't go from here to here in one step. You kind of have to get up here and go over, or you can get here and go up. So learning to let go of some of this stuff. You didn't do anything to cause your family member's illness. It wasn't because, you know, you didn't love them enough or you didn't give them enough vitamins or you didn't, you know, take them to the ball game enough or, you know, whatever kinds of things people lay on themselves. That isn't why this disease was caused. You didn't do anything, nor did your family member. To get back to the comment of your sibling, you know, your mother didn't cause this because it was on her mind for the last 40 years because she saw her parent go through that. I mean, it happens because, you know, there's something wrong with people's brains, but nobody did anything to cause it. So letting go of some of this stuff that you're going to do something to change the course of the disease is a good place to be. This he talks about getting a plan. You know, taking some of these emotions and figuring out what you can do with them. The fact that all of you came to this class is a really great thing that you've done. Because what you've said is, I'm going to spend some time, I'm going to learn what's going on, and I'm going to take some positive steps to do what I can do to help make it better for my family member and make it better for myself. So that's how you get over here, is by letting go of some of the stuff that realistically doesn't belong to you, and also putting a plan in place for what can you do as a caregiver to begin to take control of some of the situation and making not being such a victim of what the disease is doing, but figuring out what you can do to make things better, not only for your family member, but for yourself.